this is short hammer it is the 19th of april 2020 and this is trading zones this past week was very interesting a lot of things just moving amazingly uh, more than we expected and um it was a wonderful week so let's start out by looking at the mes and what ignore these lines i have lines all over the place i love drawing lines so if we look at where we came into the week we were wondering if this rally would continue and it's bad news but the rally did continue and that's what's important so what we need to watch for are these levels to the upside we have 27 Let's see what's this here 20 2872 2887 2914 2938 2970 to the downside we have 2851 2800 2773 and 2740 so what we want to watch for if you look at this setup right so these candles here were in a structure where we were holding below this 2850 area and it looked like there was a potential for us to close in here this gap up opens up this structure here where we may see a squeeze up into the 2970s you never know till the week opens and we see sort of where the buyers and sellers are but I would watch to see if we hold above the 2844s and if we do hold above this level, or should I say hold above the 2850, 2844s, we hold above this level, then I'd be looking for an extension up into the next structures here. If we don't hold above this uh, 2850 and we pull back down here into the 2833 uh, area, then I'll be watching to see if we can hold the 27. 40s here and if we sell below that then this opens up the 2713s and then the 2690s let's move on so as strong as the s p was looking at the russell we did have a bounce but not quite to the I say the strength of what we saw in the S and P. So to the upside, we have twelve fifty two, twelve ninety, thirteen fifty. To the downside, we have twelve fifteen, eleven seventy eight, and eleven thirty eight. We just had a week where uh, banks reported, and the the data was pretty bad. We'll see sort of how. Um, we do with earnings this upcoming week, but that we ended the week pushing back to the upside on the Russell is incredibly impressive. We'll see if there is a continued strength and if we can get above this uh, 1252 area and if we get a little bit of a squeeze and momentum behind it. If not, then I would be watching to see if we see a retrace down through the 1178s. Next up, we have Amazon, which went absolutely insane this week. And if you watch this movement, this squeeze and this back test and hold above the 2180s, this was an explosion to the upside. And a lot of this came from uh, the news that they were limiting new signups for uh, home deliveries of groceries from Whole Foods. And it just stirred I guess, stirred the market and everyone got excited just thinking about uh, just the tremendous numbers they must be doing from Whole Foods. So you must ask yourself this question with earnings right around the corner. As, as, as much as Amazon is selling, and they're selling tremendously well right now, especially from Whole Foods, right? What about Costco and Walmart? Are they seeing a similar, similar uh, movement to the upside? with how much they're selling. And if you look at those charts, the answer is interesting. So 
even though we have this huge pump and huge, huge, huge explosion to the upside on Walmart, primarily based on the news from Whole Foods and the overwhelming demand, I believe that Walmart and Costco probably have similar demand for their products and BJ's, all those companies probably have similar demand. So the question is, do you think that this spike will hold just based on the expectation that Whole Foods has brought in uh, such amazing profits for uh, Walmart? And also keep in mind that the, 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 the spike in uh, people ordering things from Whole Foods came at the end of the quarter. You know, it's just a few weeks at the end of the quarter. So not sure if um, the guidance would be higher based on that, but I would expect if, if everyone is thinking that uh, Walmart's going to beat because of Whole Foods, then that same uh, line of thinking would lead you to say, hey, I should be long Costco and I should be long Walmart because they also sell a bunch of grocery products online through uh, Instacart. So just something to keep an eye on. Um, and, you know, regardless, from the level where we are here at this 2375 to the upside, we have 2407, then 2450 to the downside, 2318, 2291, 2251, and then the 2186s. With earnings right around the corner, be careful if you're still in Amazon. And uh, a lot of people like to roll out of uh, positions before earnings and then pick them back up after earnings, whether it's a continuation of the upside momentum move or if there is a miss and a sell-off, they either ride it down or they wait for it to drop to a, uh, a level of where they feel there's strong demand and they buy it and pick it back up again. So just be careful if you're in Amazon. This was a very strong move to the upside. Not sure if this will continue on through earnings or hold after earnings. Just my opinion. Next up, we have Netflix, which exploded. What we mentioned on Netflix uh, last week, but also the last few weeks that we wanted to watch for. What does it do when it gets above these 380s? So the prior times it got above these 380s here um, recently, we couldn't hold. There was just no strength, no oxygen above this level. If we go back, we see that we were never really able to get above that and spend significant time above that since 2018. And that's what we were waiting for. Could we get above that? Not only did we get above this uh, 380, 384-ish area, but we also got above the previous structures that we had that pushed up around the 418 area was this the 420 ish area and look at the back test of that so we exploded above this structure here this candle structure here and then we back tested it here and the buyers pushed us just above it so we're still above all-time highs keep an eye on netflix headed into next week earnings are right around the corner i believe their metric is all based on eyeballs and with the amount of people that are that are home right now and them having issues with outages in uh, Europe based on the heavy viewership, those eyeballs should be up. But that does not mean that they're going to beat on earnings. Be careful. Be careful if you're trying to hold Netflix and ride it through earnings. Make sure you have your, uh, yourself hedged and protected. Next up, we have NVIDIA. did not have quite the movement of Amazon and uh, Netflix. So on NVIDIA, I would be watching the 291 to the downside, the 282, then the 274 to the upside. I would be watching the 295, the 300, the 313s, and then 317.60s if we can pop that. So I'll be watching those levels on NVIDIA. Moving into Facebook. So Facebook has earnings coming up at the end of April. Right now, we're right below a, a supply demand area, this 179. So to the upside, we'd be watching 179, 184, 
191, 198, then potentially a pop into the 203 area to the downside, 173, 161. Now looking at the candle structure here, let's see, when we pushed up into this structure, I would expect sellers to try to push us back down. So what we wanna see is advancement and bullish candlestick patterns, in my opinion, above this 179.60 area and a potential squeeze and a ride up into the 184s. We'll see how that shakes out next week if we're bullish or not with earnings so close, but that's what we wanna see. We wanna get above this 181. We wanna squeeze here up into this structure and to ride this pattern right up into this 184 and potentially an extension up into the 191s. We'll see how that plays out, but that's what I will be watching for. If we can't get strength above here, then a retrace to 173 is expected. And we'll see if we see continued weakness. And if there is overall market weakness, then we could see a slip and a potential pull down into the 160s. But I would expect the 173s if we can't advance above 179. And if we do advance above 179, I'd be targeting the 184 area, potentially the 191. A peak at Intel. So Intel closed a week right around 60. So to the upside, we have 6094, 62, 63, and 65. To the downside, 58, 56, 55, 71, then 53, 58 ish. Looking at Intel, it does look bullish. We are squeezing to the upside. We are above this structure here and this structure here. So if we can regain the 6094s, we wanna look for buyers to push and potentially for a, an opportunity to close this gap here above the 6279 area, which would be great. Runs right up into the 6370s, 64s. So we'll see how that plays out on Intel. Be very careful. The uh, federal government is just dumping massive amounts of money into the market to try to keep things up. So whichever, whatever reasons that you're using to uh, decide to play earnings, if you're going to play earnings or to be uh, jumping into different positions, just remember that the market right now is tremendously artificially inflated as far as with the amount of money flowing into it. So you want to be careful holding positions for a long time. If you are sort of trading on a daily basis or a weekly basis and you're getting in and out and you're following the trend, that's probably a safer play than if you were to, let's say, for example, I'm going to buy Intel here. And my expectation over the next year is that Intel will end up here. That may or may not happen because a lot of the, the movements of the underlying stocks is not dependent upon that stock itself but dependent upon the amount of liquidity being pumped into the market right now. So be very careful with any thesis as far as uh, longer term trades. And if you're in heavy, make sure to protect yourself, hedge your positions. Take a peek at McDonald's. McDonald's is running up into this candle structure here but no problem over there. Look at this drop. Boom, 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 boom. Roll that. It's an amazing drop. So to the upside of McDonald's, watch 187, 191, 196, then the 201s to the downside, 178, 171, 161. Not sure that's really even in the cards right now. McDonald's looks really strong. We want an advancement above the 187s and a squeeze into the 191s. If we can get above the 191s, look at this structure here, these candles. Spent quite a bit of time dancing around this area. So I would, excuse me, on a run up into this area, I would be uh, careful of sellers and just manage that position closely if we squeeze above the 191s on McDonald's. Mm -hmm. 
looking at goose in the $15 area we were mentioning in previous videos that it looked like a good value position to be in and goose did squeeze to the upside tested the 2030s now we're up around the 2230s what we want to be careful of is goose does have significant exposure to the chinese market and as that market recovers it would be great to see your recovery um, reflective of that in goose and a squeeze to the upside but you want to watch these levels in Goose above where we are now. Watch the 2230s, the 2419s, the 2610s. And to the downside, keep an eye on the 2030s and then the 1570s. Dollar Tree is looking really well. So Dollar Tree, we want to keep an eye on the 8415s, 8670s, 8940s to the downside, the 7940s and 7280s, 65, 60s, doubtful, but possible. What we want to watch when we squeeze up into these 8670s, this is an area that we used in the past to get a few plays where we saw that buyers were stepping in. So when we push back up here, let's see if the uh, there, there's resistance here if sellers are trying to reject and hold this area under. Since we've broken, we've found uh, trouble when we've pulled back into those 86 to 89 uh, areas, finding buyers and getting squeezes out of this to the upside. So definitely keep an eye on this if we run up into the 86 to 89s to see if the buyers are able to overcome any selling pressure that may exist there. And next up, we have Tesla. We mentioned before that when Tesla dropped down here into the 360s, that if we look here, the 385s was an area before that we had trouble breaking. But ever since this explosion and this breakout, this back test, buyers did step in and we did hold on this rollback down, we did hold those levels. So to the upside on Tesla from here, we have 784, 819, 857, and 937. To the downside, we have 713, 651, and 616. I will keep an eye on Tesla. They do have earnings coming up at the end of the month. The reason why these lines up here are so wide apart is because when it's gotten up here, the range has been insane. So if you're in Tesla and you're bullish on Tesla, uh, just make sure that you watch these wider levels and um, try to enter. For me personally, if I would want to be in on a break of a level, a hold, and try to ride forward, squeeze into the next level. But if we went back below that level, I would be stopping out of my, my, uh, my position on Tesla. But the vibes do tend to be positive or seem to be positive right now around Tesla. So uh, for those that made a ton of money trading this last week, just be careful, watch your six. Let's take a peek at the SPY. The SPY, we're right around this 286 area. To the upside, we have 286.60s, 294s, 302s, 307s. To the downside, we have 280, 273, and 260.66. If we zoom out a little bit, we do have some candle structure here that we want to get into. And if we get into this candle structure above these 286s, what we want to see is a squeeze up here. So, so what you've seen, right, is look at this. You see, we've seen buying here and sort of matriculated up to this area, pull back below. But when we've gotten back above this area, the buyers have given us a little bit of a run into the 294s. So we'll see if we're able to catch a bid and a squeeze up into the 294s. But that does seem probable if we remain bullish headed into next week. I believe, um, taking a peek at CI, 
UNH had earnings recently and they did beat, I believe. So that may be creating a sympathy play with CI, which happens to be one of my favorite healthcare tickers. Earnings is at the end of April. And if you watch CI, I love that we mention often, let me broaden this out so you can see the numbers we have here. But an uh, area that we mention often are the 140s, specifically these 147s. So what you see from this is when we've dropped into this area, buyers have stepped in and they've defended this area, like vigorously defended this area. So when we drop down through here, you see that we didn't spend too many days separated from this 147. It was almost like a magnetic pull back to this area. And the buyers pushed us back through. So if you're looking at CI, let's squeeze this up a little bit. What you want to watch for to the upside is 202, 206, 215s, 222s. You see we had a little bit of trouble holding above the 222s. Uh, to the downside, the 190s, 181s, and 173s. The interesting, interesting thing about CI, watch those 212s. Um, that is an area that you will see a little bit of contention. We've used that as a level to trade off of in the past. I don't have a line on it, but I remember that area clearly. And above, we're bullish. Below, we're a little bit more bearish. And I've been able to get some great day trades off that area. So keep an eye on it around the 212s. But you do have these levels that we have marked as supply and demand areas on CI. So you can make your plays off of those um, if they match up with some of the levels that you have, some of the plays that, um, that you have in mind. Next up. Microsoft looking really strong. Watch these 180s. Sellers have been a little active there. So what we want to watch on Microsoft to the upside is the 180s, the 183, 185, then 191 to the downside, the 176, the 174, the 168. So if we are remain bullish headed into this upcoming week where we do have some uh, a few tech earnings coming out, then Microsoft may move with that momentum to the upside. If the tech plays or the uh, tech earnings are not good, Microsoft may be headed back to the downside. So watch these lines and these levels. I believe 180 is a pretty strong level on Microsoft. We'll see if the buyers are able to push us above that. If they do, it looks like a squeeze into 183 is probable. Just looking at these candles, these candles and the candle structure here, we have uh, increased volume here. So we have to watch for that. But if we don't, a pullback to 176 and actually 174 and lower is also probable. So we have to keep an eye on Microsoft and this, this setup in this structure here. But look how bullish we look heading into next week. Very interesting. Let's take a peek at Apple. Apple is above the trend line that we we drew from quite some time ago. I believe this is back in in May. But what we want to watch for to the upside, we're right below the 284s. Watch and see if we can get bullish candlestick formations above this and an advancement. So above that 284, we have 294. 308, 312s, and 318s below. We have 277s, 272s, 267s. If we remain bullish into next week, I do think we could see a little bit more upside on Apple. But personally, I'll be concerned about Apple's sales because the stores in China have been closed for quite some time. And they're now currently closed in the US, I believe. So not sure what those sale numbers will be. Earnings are coming up at the end of the month. Um, so just be careful with any positions that you have in these tickers in expectations of them having wonderful earnings. Uh, the Fed just pumping so much liquidity into the market has really thrown a lot of things off. So just be careful in your positions. If you like this video, please don't hesitate to tap that like button and go to our channel, Power of Pivots, where you can subscribe to receive content from me, but also content from Elisa as she shows you how she utilizes her Power of Pivots script to not just great, 
get great intraday plays, but also get great swing plays on futures, on blue chip tickers, and also on penny stocks. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful week trading and stay safe.